Understanding your signature presence and your assets leads to the development of your personal platform. What is a personal platform and how would someone go about developing this? I always tell people don't leave home without your personal platform, right? And it's funny, we kind of take ourselves for granted and we don't go into inquiry very often into what we really believe about something. So I would recommend that everybody think about a goal that they have. It could be a business goal. It could be a family goal. It could be a community-oriented goal. Or even a personal goal, right? Uh, yeah, right, better exactly. Health or... Better health, more fit, that kind of thing. And ask yourself the question and answer it. I believe in fitness because answer that stem sentence five times. I believe in growing my business because, five times, answer it five times. I believe in getting my kids getting into college in the Ivy League network. I believe in college because, five times. And what happens is, it's a thoughtful, very reflective process and your first two thoughts are going to be logical and they're going to be what you would say if somebody stopped you on the street. Why do you believe in higher education? Why do you believe in fitness? Why do you believe in growing your business? But the next three, in particular the last two, are going to be really a reflection of what you deeply believe your closely held values, and it begins then to help you speak from that deeper place to yourself. Speak to other people. Act. Make an action out of that deeply held belief, which is in fact part of your asset pool. So personal platform, uh, especially in the social media world, look at how many people are blogging, but it's a good example of what we only recently have started to do. That whole idea about the power of one, I have a voice, I'm able to get my point of view across, my opinion matters. Um, blogging is only one uh, real expression of that, but it's a big societal global shift in, oh my gosh, it's not just the journalists that have a point of view, it's not just the thought leaders that write the op-ed pieces, but my deeply held beliefs, my platform matters. Kathy, in the book you talked about a pretty famous example of this I believe uh, using Edward R. Murrow. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, I was totally fascinated. As I told you earlier, I studied leadership and Edward R. Murrow was a true leader, especially right after World War II. And there was a kind of a dearth of confidence in some ways about being a democracy, a healthy democracy, and he felt moved to invite his audiences to write short personal platform stories about why they believed, what they believed about America. I believe this about America. You know, when, when I really think about being a, a democracy, this is what I believe in. And this groundswell of stories and five sentences about what uh, I believe in democracy because uh, flooded his inbox. <laughs> this was way before email, obviously, and he would literally make those personal platforms about democracy come alive on his shows, on his radio shows. So that's an example of how you can use something like a belief system to make each person and the collective as a whole, whether it be your organization or your family or a community, not-for-profit, really get in touch with one's personal platform when it comes to the why they believe in something.